What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion 9 tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about the precipitation settings and how you can use those to create rain and snow inside your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so in order to do this we're going to use one of the example models that comes with Lumion. And in this case we're going to use the Villa Cabrera example. So open up Lumion 9 and click on Villa Cabrera. And we're going to use this because it has a pool and it's a really good example of the way the different precipitation settings are going to look. So start off by clicking on that and loading up this model. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our camera and we're going to fly around until we're looking at the pool. So in this case, the pool is over here. And the reason I like using the pool is because it's a it really kind of shows what the precipitation settings can do. So the first thing is the pool or the the precipitation settings can be found in the photo and movie options. So if you click under photo, for example, you're going to apply this just like you would any other effect. And I'm going to start off and I'm just going to store this as a new camera. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start editing the style. So we can start off and we can just pick a custom style. And in this case, I'm going to pick the overcast option. What the overcast option does is this just makes everything in here look overcast. And so there's a couple different things I'm going to do to this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of the real skies. So I'm just going to go up and click on effects. I'm going to go over to weather and climate and I'm going to click real skies. And in this case, the real sky that I'm going to select is overcast. And we'll go with uh, this overcast two, the one in the middle. And what that does is that allows us to put this cloudy sky in the background that looks more realistic than just the standard Lumion um, generated skies in the background. So that's how we're going to start. And then in addition to applying the real skies, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the effects and you're going to click on weather and climate. You're going to click on the option for precipitation. And you can see what precipitation does is it actually adds in real precipitation. And if you were to zoom in, for example, on like the pool, you can see how there's actual water droplets forming on the surface. Um, based on this precipitation. And we'll look at that more in just a second. But for now, let's take a look at a few of the different options that come along with this. So for example, if you look at your sliders, the first thing you'll notice is there's an option for rain and snow. So you can make a snowy look and a rainy look. So you can see how this allows you to apply both rain and snow depending on what kind of weather you want. And you'd probably want to do something with this water material to make it look more frozen if you were to go with the snow. In this case, we're more interested in rain anyway. But the second option allows you to set the phase of the precipitation. So you can see how if you drag this all the way to the left or to the right, everything's fairly dry. But then if you're in the middle of the precipitation phase, then you get these reflective water areas on your different surfaces. Surfaces. And so that's basically if you think about like a rainstorm, right? At the very beginning of the rainstorm, it starts to rain, but everything's not really wet. And then in the middle of the rainstorm, everything's wet. And then by the end, everything dries off. So that's what the phase does. The particles quantity is that's going to adjust the number of particles both in your camera, so the actual rain particles themselves, as well as things like the number of droplets on the uh, on the pool or things like that. And then you can also adjust the size of those. And you'll notice that um, things like the actual droplets themselves or the ripples created by the droplets, those are actually adjusting in size as well when you do this. You can also adjust if the precipitation is blocked by plants or how far out the precipitation is blocked, meaning it's not trying to render things that you can't see in your camera view. So these two options allow you to set the blocking distance. We're not going to talk about that too much. The other thing this does is if you look at your sky, you can see how as you set the extra fog addition, what that does is that sets how much you can see your HDRI sky and things off in the background. So this adjusts if there's an extra fog look or not inside your rendering. And so once you've played around with these settings, first of all, you can use this to render a rainy image um, just using your photos. So once you've set this the way that you want, you can click render photo and you can actually create that rendering. Okay. 
And you can see how this will render all of your different reflections. This will render the ripples in the pool. So you can create a really rainy look, which could be really good, especially if you're creating like a warm interior scene where you're looking out the window and seeing the rain. So you could really do some great things with this looking out from inside your models. And then the other thing you can do is you can also create a movie. So you can actually use this setting in the movie. And we're actually gonna use this first example. So there's an example here that already flies sideways across this pool. So you can see how this moves left to right and it's about seven seconds long. And so that's just the first one and it comes by default as a part of Lumion. So we're gonna select that one just by clicking on it. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add those same effects. So you're gonna add that overcast sky and then you're gonna add the precipitation effect. And you can adjust the particle size and quantity and all of that if you want to. And then as you click play, you can see how the rain is actually coming down and creating ripples on your different faces. So it creates this really realistic looking rainy image. So once you've done that, um, if you wanna make any changes, you definitely can. So let's say for example that you wanted your fog to be a little more thick. You could go ahead and do that. And so then once you have your settings the way you like them, you can go down and you can click on the button for render clip. So don't click render movie because that'll render all of your clips. In this case, you can click render clip and this will allow you to set your output quality and the number of frames as well as your resolution. And note that the higher the quality and the higher number of frames, the longer this rendering is gonna take. So go ahead and select whatever you want. In this case, I'm gonna leave it on production quality and 30. I'm gonna click full HD and we'll go ahead and click the render button. And so that's gonna go through and that's gonna render all of your different frames. And you can see how this one in particular has 300 frames and it tells you it's gonna take about 10 minutes. So we'll take a look at the result in just a second. All right, and so here's what our final image looks like. So you can see how as your camera pans sideways, this is giving us the ripples, this is giving us the wet concrete effect with reflections. So it really gives you a realistic looking precipitation render. So I'm fairly happy with how easy it was to get this particular result. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you like the precipitation settings? Do you have any cool ideas for what you could do with this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.